Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to KI South Hill, Virginia, our, our new broadcasting time. We've had some challenges with our time in our space, but God is faithful and we still have our space, so we're thankful for that. No matter what time we, we get our space, we're grateful for the time that we have to come together and bless the Lord. This morning, we just want to come before the Lord with a word of prayer before we go into worship. And we're just going to have a quick word of prayer, and then we'll go directly into the word. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless your name, O oh Jesus. God, we thank you, God. We magnify you, God. We exalt you, O oh God. You are holy, God. You are righteous, O oh God. We love and adore you, O oh God. God, we thank you, O oh God, for this, this day, O oh God, this snowy, snowy, rainy day, O oh God, that you've allowed us to see, O oh God. Some of us are working on no sleep, and some of us are rising up for the first time this morning, O oh God. But no matter how we're approaching our day, God, we say thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy, O oh God. Now, God, as we come into this time of instruction in your word, open our ears in the spirit of oh God Holy Spirit preach your word and your word alone hide me so that I am not seen O oh God but that you would be seen and heard alone O oh God do what you want done in the hearts and lives of your people O oh God change us O oh God till we are conformed to the image of Jesus Christ bring the backslider back home O oh God and cause a sinner man to cry out what must I do to be saved O oh God and we will forever give your name the praise in Jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah bless the Lord Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, if you're following along, watching on Facebook Live, however you're doing this, watching a watch party with friends or whatever, turn to the book of Galatians. <laughs> turn to the book of Galatians. And we're going to go uh, to chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to go to verse 16 through 24. And I'll be reading from the Amplified Version this morning. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. And it reads like this, but I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit, seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature, which respond impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. For the sinful nature has its desire, which is opposed to the spirit and the desire of the spirit opposes the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict. So that you, as believers, do not always do whatever good things you want to do. But if you are guided and led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Verse 19, now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies. Verse 21, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. I warned you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit, the result of his presence within us is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Verse 24, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with its passions and appetites amen galatians 5 16 through 24 in the amplified version bless the lord for his word we as the body of christ beloved have been endowed with the power of the holy spirit however we are still in these fleshly bodies when we take a look at the works of the flesh compared to the workings and the fruit of the spirit and begin to apply them to our souls we can stay grounded in god's word and are able to carry out his mission and plan for our lives today we're talking about beware the creosote of your soul beware the creosote of your soul well preacher what are you talking about beware the creosote what in the world is creosote well, us country folks down here in the sticks of Virginia, most of us know what creosote is. We either have a, a wood-burning fireplace either on the inside of our house, we have a fireplace, or we have an outdoor wood burner. And we're very familiar with burning wood and how, how, how the wood uh, burns and, and the residue of the wood. So creosote, what is creosote? Creosote is a tar-like sticky substance that's formed from that burnt wood. 
Uh, one of the problems with creosote is that it doesn't go away on its own, but it grows, and I want you to pay attention to this, it grows in a kind of self-perpetuating cycle. Creosote accumulates due to a lack of open ventilation, pay attention, which causes the creosote to coat the walls of the chimney flue, which narrows the passageway in your chimney. A narrow passageway will restrict ventilation even more, which in turn causes more buildup, et cetera, et cetera, until your, your furnace or your stove is no longer effectual or you have a terrible house fire, okay? So we're dealing with spiritual creosote today, the spiritual creosote of the soul, okay? We looked back in those verses and it talked about the works of the flesh versus the, the fruit of the spirit, okay? When you operate in the works of the flesh, idolatry, witchcraft, Envy, drunkenness, rage, bitterness, all of those actions, those, those actions form dangerous deposits in your spirit. These actions are contrary to the spirit of God and cannot coexist with where the spirit of God dwells. The Bible is clear that those who operate or live operating in the works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God in verse 21. The nature of creosote is is in the natural that is that it builds up over time so as you burn the wood in your furnace or your stove or however the creosote slowly builds up over time <clears throat> when you allow the, the the fires of the works of the flesh to operate in your life spiritual creosote forms first subtly and it begins to build up over time it cakes up in the furnace and it f cakes up in the stove and it builds up in the fires of jealousy anger bitterness and rage if we look around today we see a lot of people are angry a lot of people are upset we've entered a new year we've got a new uh, administration and some folks are upset they were very upset they're raiding capitals around the nation and folks are upset and they're operating out of bitterness and anger and as these spiritual deposits begin to form in your soul, they begin to block off the flow of the Spirit of God in your life. Spiritual creosote blocks the breath of the Holy Spirit or the ruach of the Holy Spirit from blowing in your spirit. Continual buildup of spiritual creosote will eventually, if not handled properly, will completely block the flow of the Spirit in your life. Secondly, the works of the Spirit are in direct opposition to our flesh. We read it back in those verses where it talks about if you're operating out of the flesh, you can't do the good things that you need to be doing that, that promote the kingdom of God, that further the kingdom of God. If you're working out of angerness and bitterness and, and dissension and, and, and bitterness and anger and, and rage and all of those jealousies and witchcraft and drunkenness and idolatry, if you're operating out of those, those things in your life, you are in direct opposition to the Spirit of God. The works of the flesh are in direct opposition to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When we look at the fruit of the Spirit in verses 22 and 23, we see the spiritual remedy for the creosote that forms so easily in our lives. Spiritual creosote is often formed by our own approval because we want to operate in what feels good and what operates what tickles our flesh we want to operate in the good and easy life we want to operate in where our names can be up in light we want to operate in those things that that seemingly are good things but they have detriment because they build up spiritual creosote in our spirits it has been said that the first fruit listed which is love is the cornerstone or foundation for all of the other fruits listed when you base your motivations and walk on the cornerstone of love, all of the other works of the Spirit are now allowed to flourish in your life and will manifest themselves in your daily walk and your daily actions. When you're operating out of love, when you walk in peace, when you exhibit joy, those things will, will produce a residue of the, the flow of the Spirit in your life as opposed to the creosote from anger and bitter and bitterness and jealousy and, and strife and all of those things that build up blackness in our souls and the creosote of sin that blackens our soul. Walking in the spirit and learning how to walk in the spirit of God and allowing the spirit of God to hone us and shape us till we uh, reflect Jesus Christ. It's not an easy walk, but it is necessary. But there is a remedy. 
But before we get to the remedy, let's examine what's going on around us today. We see these very works of the flesh everywhere we turn, especially with Corona. People have been uh, ho uh, cooped up in their homes and, 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 and things are shut down. People are losing their jobs. People are losing hope. Uh, uh, the church doors, some of them are shut. Some of them are open and some of them are, are in contention and with the, with the courts about being open. And, and, and the church people are, 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 are at each other and going back and forth and different things are going on and all of these crazy things because of corona and the church is confused and conflicted about some things and if the church is confused and conflicted what message are we sending to the world but there is a remedy to this what is this remedy we looked at the fruit of the spirit in verses 22 and 23 the remedy can be found in two particular verses in what we read this morning Verses 16 and then down in verse 24. Okay? But before we go look at those verses, I want to give you an illustration. And this is a, is a real true illustration that happened to me personally. Just re recently, my birth father appeared back in my life out of the clear blue sky. And I do mean the clear blue sky. Quite literally, he appeared in my life. He reached out to try and find me through some distant relatives of ours in another state and he, he, he got a friend of his to look me up on the internet and, and, and got a hold of me through my, my business page on Facebook and, and gave me his number and invited me to call and was you know concerned about trying to get a hold of me. Now take the thought that I've never seen this man in my life. He's never laid eyes on me. All he knows is that he has a daughter somewhere in America. He's never, we've talked exactly one time in my life. And that was right before I joined the Navy. So he spent, he spent a lot of energy trying to find me. Now, here's the thing about this. I could have allowed the fruit of bitterness to, to explode in my life. I could have allowed the, the fruit of anger to, to, to build up over time in, in my soul that being angry about, well, I don't have a father. I don't know who my real dad is. And all of these things that, that so often people associate with, with broken relationships. And I don't even know if you could call our relationship broken because we never met. But when that happens and people tend to, 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 to get angry and, and that stuff builds up over time and that, that anger builds up over time. Well, my dad never knew me and I never knew my dad and he never spoke to me. He never was around. He didn't do this and he didn't do that. It's a real scenario that people face every day. And as they face this situation, I'm not the only one that this has happened to. It's a very familiar situation. As they face this situation, they allow the angerness and the bitterness and the disappointment and the hurt of not having a father figure in their life to build that spiritual creosote we've been talking about up in their spirits. And they become, they be, their souls become black. And the flow of the Holy Ghost is stopped and the, the wind of the Holy Ghost no longer blows in their life because they're, they're so full of the creosote of sin and bitterness and anger in their souls. But I chose a different path this time. I chose not to be angry with a man I had never laid eyes on. What charge could I lay against him? If he brought us up in a court of law, I could lay no charge on him except I never knew the man. So as you allow that spiritual creosote to build up in your soul, the Holy Ghost now is taking a backseat in your life because you're full of the blackness of sin and the blackness of anger and the blackness of bitterness and the blackness of your broken spirit. But there is a remedy. There is a remedy. And we're going back to verse 16. First, we are to continually walk in the spirit. The Amplified reads that as habitually. They say it takes 30 days to form a habit. Okay? Okay. So you are to habitually walk in the spirit. It means to, to habitually, just like you get out of bed and put your slippers on and, and brush your teeth and wash your face, just like you form those habits over time. You need to habitually walk with the spirit. You need to commune with the spirit of God. You need to interact with the spirit of God on a daily basis. Habitually build that habit. Then it says to seek him and be responsive to his guidance. Secondly, we're told to crucify the sinful nature. 
Well, what is crucifixion? We understand crucifixion is, is what our Savior went through for our sins, that he might redeem mankind. But let me give you a brief uh, explanation of, of, of crucifixion. Let me give you a brief picture of crucifixion. Crucifixion is a painful and agonizing death, usually reserved for the worst of criminals. In most translations in the passages we read, the, crucif the term crucifixion is used. It is meant to denote the intense energy we need to kill our flesh. Look briefly at the crucifixion of Jesus, our Savior, for an example. The Bible records, first of all, that a crown of thorns was placed upon his head. This symbolizes the crucifixion of every evil thought and contrary taught thought that, that rises up in our spirits that's against the knowledge of God, that, that comes against the, the, the right thinking of a person who's filled with the Spirit. Next, the Bible records his hands and feet were pierced. This symbolizes the killing of, of lending our hands and feet to evil works and going in pathways where our feet were never meant to trod. The next thing that the Bible accounts in Jesus' crucifixion is that his side was pierced. This symbolizes the killing of poisonous thoughts that come from our inner man. The anger, the jealousy, the bitterness, the rage, all of those things that foment from the inside. The word of God is clear. It says it's not the food that you take into your body that defiles you, but it is the things that come out of a man that defile him. So we have to allow the spirit of God to work on the inside of us and kill those things and, and continually crucify those things in our flesh that work against the spirit of God operating in our life. We must allow the... Holy Spirit to use the creosote buster of the spirit on our souls. He must take the chisel of grace and mercy and begin to chip away at the unhealthy deposits in our lives. He must sprinkle us with the word of God daily and the power of God through prayer until all the deposits of sin and blackness are removed from our souls and are replaced with the goodness of God until we are walking in step with the spirit of God. Hallelujah, bless God, hallelujah. It's not an easy task once, once you've had all this spiritual creosote built up in your soul. You know, we go through many challenges and life is hard and life throws us many things and we deal with so much stuff in the world and all of this stuff builds up over time if we're not careful, if we're not staying in the word, if we're not staying on our face, if we're not daily communing with God, that spiritual creosote will be, be black in our souls and, and we choke out the life of the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us not to quench the Holy Spirit. When we walk in the things of the flesh, and we refuse to listen to the word of God and we refuse to turn from our sinful ways and we refuse to allow the chisel and the creosote buster of the Holy Ghost to operate in our lives. This is what happens. It's not an easy process, but it can be done because we serve a Savior who is, has no failure. But when we surrender our lives to God and we say, God, I desire you more than anything else. I desire you more than I desire fame. I desire you, your presence in my life, more than money, more than anything else in my life, God. Take the, the Holy Ghost and bust up that spiritual creosote out of my heart, God. Bust up the creosote of anger. Bust up that creosote of, 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 of bitterness. Bust up the creosote of jealousy. Bust up the creosote of, of, of striving with my neighbor. Bust up the creosote of envying things that, that aren't for me. God, take the wand of the Holy Ghost and scrub my soul clean, God. Then wash me and purify me with hyssop, God. Purge me of every bit of spiritual creosote that's operating in my life so God, now my life will bring you glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. It can be done, saints. This is not an impossible task. We serve the God of all power who loves us with an everlasting, unfailing, unchanging love. And he desires to take the scrub brush of the Holy Ghost to our hearts and our minds and cleanse us from every evil work. Beware the creosote of your soul, saints. As we go through these times and we're looking and we're walking through, quite literally, we're walking through Matthew 24 as we speak. Plagues and pestilences, wars and rumors of war. All of these things, the Bible is true. And we see it every day. Don't let your spirits become blackened with the creosote of sin. 
Don't let your, the, 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 the blackness of creosote build up in your spirit. Don't let the, the blackness of, of spiritual creosote be found in your mouth. But open your mouth and declare the works of the living God. Cry out to God and seek his face daily. That he might cleanse us from every evil work. And the works of the enemy and the, the, the works of the flesh. Examine yourself, the Bible tells us, to see if we be in the faith. When you take a self-examination and you see those areas of creosote beginning to build them up, the Bible says that you can bring those things to the cross and lay them at the feet of Jesus. Cast your cares on him for he cares for you. It's okay to tell God, God, my heart is black right now in this area. I've got creosote in, in, in my marriage, God. I've got creosote about my, my job. I've got creosote about issues that go on in the church. I've got creosote building up in me, Holy Spirit, because I see the, all the pain in the world and it doesn't look like anything is changing. But the living God is true. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wash me, Father. Purge me with hyssop, as, as the scriptures say, that I might be whiter than snow. Today, I warn you truthfully, and I warn you forcefully, beware the creosote of your soul. If you're walking in this land today and you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, there's spiritual creosote in your life. It doesn't have to be there. It doesn't have to remain there. But you can take a step for Jesus Christ today, towards Jesus Christ today, and begin the process of having that spiritual creosote erased out of your life forever. You can have the, the spiritual creosote of sin washed by the blood of Jesus and his work on Calvary's cross just for you. If you're walking and you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, I invite you today to take the words of the scriptures that says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. As we always tell you, this is not a gimmick that we, we use to get folks in the seats or dollars in the plate. But this is the literal word of God for your life. That Jesus Christ came into the earth to redeem mankind. He shed his blood, he suffered, bled, and died, and rose again just for you and me. That's a promise. That's what he did for you because he loved you so much and he was that concerned about the spiritual creosote forming in your life that he was willing to give up his life on Calvary just for you. So if that's you today and you're looking and your soul is, is weary and your soul is tired and you've been wandering throughout the earth looking for peace and looking for joy and can't seem to find it, we invite you to Jesus Christ today. All you have to do is say, Lord, I need a savior. I recognize that I am a sinner, God, and I need you to be my Lord and savior. I thank you, Lord, that you died on Calvary's cross for me, washing all my sins away for all eternity. And I, not, and I now take you as my Lord and my savior forevermore to live with you eternally. In Jesus' name, amen. It's not a gag. It's not a gimmick. It's not a joke. But peace through Jesus Christ, joy through Jesus Christ, calmness of the storm in your spirit can be yours today. We invite you to take a step for Christ today. If that was you and you prayed that prayer and you asked the Lord to come into your heart as you're watching this broadcast this morning, we would like to know. You can contact us here on Facebook Messenger and let us know. I receive Christ as Lord and Savior today. Or... You, if you need special prayer, you can also contact us on Facebook Messenger and say, I need prayer. I need somebody to pray with me. Our ministers will get back to you. We, we check Facebook quite frequently. We'll get back with you. We'll pray with you on Facebook or if you want us to, to actually call you or we'll set up a Zoom call. However you want to get in contact with us, let us know. We want to hear your faith journey. We want to partner with you as you walk in this, this faith walk, as you take a step towards Christ or if you're one of those who has walked away from church and you once knew the Lord, but you got tired and you got weary, we invite you to return to Jesus Christ today so that the weariness of, and the creosote of weariness can be erased from your soul and you can return to the fold of Jesus Christ and refine that peace and refine that power that you once had. You know you're missing it. I don't know who you are, but you're missing it. You're missing the peace. You're missing the joy. You're missing the comfort 
of Christ in your life. You walked away, and God is saying it's time to come back home. If that's you today, let us know on Facebook Messenger. Or if you're looking for a church, I know it doesn't look like any churches are open, but we're still doing the work of the kingdom here at Kingdom Experience International. We're one church in many locations, whether that's here at our, our South Hill, uh, Virginia campus, or you're joining us virtually through uh, out the world, whether, wherever you may be throughout the world. Kingdom Experience is a great place to begin or continue your faith journey. If you would like to continue and partner with us, we encourage you once again to contact us on Facebook and let us know. I'm looking for a church home. I'm looking for a place that I can learn the word of God, that I can hear the word of God, that somebody can pray with me, that I can, that I can get solid Bible teachings and get back into the things that Christ would have me to do. If that's you, hit us up on Facebook Messenger. We also invite you to visit our webpage at keichurch.org. That's keichurch.org. And visit our website for all of the information about our main campus under the auspices of our apostle, the Reverend Dr. Keisha DeCosta Ford, who is joining us this morning. Hello again, Pastor. And we will, we will talk with you about our, our campus experiences. We have things going on during the week. We have uh, Monday through Friday. We have someone speaking on, on our Facebook page, giving you a pastoral experience, a prophetic experience, an evangelistic experience and many more uh, experiences in the word. Just brief words for about 10 minutes, not a long teaching, just a word of the Lord to encourage your heart, to, to strengthen you as you go throughout the week. You can get a word from Monday through Friday on our KEI Facebook page. And we're looking forward to partnering with you. Also, if you would like to make a donation or give an offering to Kingdom Experience International, you can do that on our Facebook page as well or, uh, excuse me, on our website as well at keichurch.org. I'm Minister Josette Dingle here at our South Hill campus on Highway 47 down the street from the radio station every Sunday morning now at 1115, our new broadcast time. So if you're looking for a place and you want to stop by and join me here, the doors of the church are open when I'm here. I'm in the building, so if you want to join me, come on by. We thank you for watching this afternoon, and we hope that God blesses you and strengthens you and gives you peace throughout the rest of your week. God bless and keep you. Amen.